All right, so there's my derivative from part A. In part B, we're asked to find the equation of the tangent line to the curve y equals f of x at x equals 1. So the point slope form of a line, y equals m times x minus x naught plus y naught, the m is going to be the derivative at that point, and the y naught is going to be the function value at that point. So as far as tangent lines are concerned, y equals f prime at x naught, x minus x naught plus f of x naught. So here my x naught is 1. So I can find f, uh, excuse me, x naught is 1. So f of 1, I go to the original formula here and substitute in x equals 1. That's the square root of 1 minus 12 times 1 over 3 times 1 squared. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 12 is negative 11 over 3. So that's my y naught. That's the f of x naught. And then for the slope, that's going to be f prime at 1. So I'm going to plug 1 into this equation. It gives me my slope. 8 times x to the 1 half minus 1 divided by 2 times 1 to the 5 halves. 1 to the 1 half power is 1, so I get 8 minus 1 on the numerator. 1 to the 5 halves power is 1, 2 in the denominator. And so that simplifies to 7 halves. So now I feed all this into my formula, y equals m, 7 halves, x minus x naught, x minus 1, plus f of x naught, negative 11 thirds. We can clean this up a little bit. y equals 7 halves x. I'm going to have minus 7 halves minus 11 thirds. So let's go up here. Minus 7 halves minus 11 thirds. It'll give me a denominator, a common denominator of 6. Multiply this by 3, negative 21. Multiply that by 2, 22. It gives me negative 43 over 6. Now, if you want to check out to make sure this works, uh, you're completely invited to graph this in your graphing calculator. And graph this in your graphing calculator. And look closely at what's happening near x equals 1. Since f is differentiable at 1, this graph and this line should become indistinguishable. And so that's a way you can graphically check your answer. That'll do it for part b. Okay, on number 2 we're asked to sketch the graph of a function which is continuous everywhere, but it's not differentiable at 3. So there are many answers to this. We talked in class that if a function is differentiable, then it necessarily has to be continuous. Uh, but um, the converse isn't always true. So here's 3. That's going to be the point of contention. If we're continuous everywhere else, then we have a nice connected curve. But at 3, something has to happen. So what could be happening at 3 that would mess up differentiability? Well, it could be a corner, the limit from the left of the difference quotient and the limit from the right of the difference quotient approach two different numbers. So that would give a jump discontinuity in the derivative. We could have a cusp, in which case the tangent lines, the slope of the tangent lines from one direction uh, approach infinity and the slope of the tangent lines from another direction approach negative infinity. We could have a vertical tangent in which it just gets just too steep. So if I look at the limit of the difference quotient from both directions, it approaches either negative infinity or positive infinity from both sides. So these are three common ways for a function to, to fail to be differentiable at a point, but yet still be continuous there. So you can just pick your favorite.
I'll just be plain and just use a corner. All right, any of those three though, any of those three features, that three would work. That'll do it for number two.